You've never had a ho ho holiday roast this good. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to another week of The Fogo Life. As always, I'm your host, Captain Ron, resident expert. So, it's holiday time again. We have something super special. We are gonna make a stuffed pork loin that we're gonna stuff with roasted red peppers that we're gonna roast ourselves, spinach and cheese. When you slice this thing open, it's gonna have all those beautiful Christmas colors just exploding inside. So let's get started. Our first step in this process is gonna be to light the Minimax, because that's what we're gonna roast our peppers on. So we're gonna take these peppers, we're gonna roast them over live fire. You want them to get as black as possible. You wanna completely char them, all right? Then we're gonna put them in a little bin right here, seal them up and let them sit like that. What that does is the humidity in there loosens up the skin and lets it come off really easy. If you've ever bought jarred roasted peppers in the store, forget about those. These are gonna be beyond anything you've ever tasted. So I wanna tell you something. Here's a great way to save a lot of money and do something super simple, be able to have a couple meals out of one thing. I went to the store and they had a piece of pork loin that was about that big. It was $28. From about there to there was about $28. So what I did, I went to my local big box store and bought an entire pork loin for $18. $18 for this whole piece. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a roast off at this end. We're gonna cut a roast off at this end and the center can all be cut into pork chops, whether you want them thin or thick, but it's a great way to take one thing, save yourself a bunch of money, put about five minutes worth of work into it and have a whole bunch of meals that you can make for yourselves. Now, let's get to work. We're gonna work with this one, fat cap up. So I always want the fat side up. So we're just gonna open her up, stick the knife in, and be careful not to cut the meat here, just cut the plastic. Now, if you do this right, you can catch all the juices and not spill them everywhere before you throw them out. You know, I know you see us using these gloves a lot in videos here, and there's a reason for it. I know we're not a restaurant, but even home cooks should be using these because what it does is it protects everything around you from getting salmonella and foodborne illnesses, okay? The best part is they're available on our website. There's a link below in the description. Next thing we're gonna do, pat this baby dry. All right, so we're just gonna take some paper towels, real simple. Like I said, I mean, there's not, not brain surgery here. I'm just gonna pat it dry, flip her over, do both sides. Now, if you can notice, there's two ends to this meat. One is a much thicker end, one is a thinner end. They're both roasts, but for our purposes today, we're gonna use the thicker end because we're gonna butterfly it open, stuff it, and then re-roll it. So we wanna have as much um, width and girth as, as possible for this. Now, what to do with the rest of this thing is, the other end, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna cut a roast off of it, then we're gonna cut the center portion into pork chops. Now, this has a fat cap. You can trim this fat cap off. I personally like to leave it. I think that it really adds a little bit more flavor to the, to the meat, whatever you're cooking. I like to leave it on there. You can score it, whatever you wanna do. I like to leave it on, take it off if you want. It's up to you. So you can see for $17 and some odd cents, you got two nice roasts and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pork chops. That's a beautiful thing right there. Now we're at the part that everybody gets nervous about, butterflying open the pork loin. Folks, it's really simple. It seems like it's gonna be difficult. It's not. You can use any kind of knife. I like to use a boning knife, but for this one, actually, I'm gonna use a long, I have a brisket slicer. Use whatever knife you're comfortable with, okay? All we're gonna do is we're gonna lay this pork loin flat here like this, and we're gonna start about a half inch above, and we're just gonna cut a slice along the bottom. We're gonna try and maintain it as even as possible. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it and then keep rolling it as we're cutting it open, and just so we can butterfly it open like that so we have plenty of room to stuff it. So this is how you do it. And don't worry about it if you're not going perfectly level or perfectly even the whole time, that's quite all right. You just wanna make sure you don't go all the way through. Voila, how's that? Now the next step is gonna make it even better. So now we're just gonna take a piece of plastic wrap, set it right over our pork. The reason for the plastic wrap is we are going to pound it with our meat hammer. If you don't have a meat hammer, use the bottom of a heavy pan, like a cast iron pan or something like that. But the plastic is gonna prevent all the meat splatters from going everywhere. So just take it like this. What we wanna do is make it even all the way across. So if you have thick spots, which we definitely do here, which you're going to have, that's normal. Even butchers, when they do it, they do this. That's why they count it. So we're just gonna take out our aggressions on this pork loin and go to work on it. And voila, a flattened out pork loin. There are certain times that it's better to do this than others. Kids annoying you, this is a great time. Spouse annoying you, this is a great time. Traffic frustrating, this is a great time. Bam, bam, take it out on the pork. Picante extra sharp provolone. All right, our first step is to line the entire pork line with provolone. You can overlap them pretty good. You wanna get this good provolone flavor in there. This is a sharp, this is actually boar's head 
picante provolone. It's the sharpest provolone that I could find. And with that, our peppers are now ready to be peeled. So check this out. Ooh. We've let the pepper sit for about 10 minutes to let that steam do its job here. So when you're handling hot foods, okay, I talked about these rubber gloves that we have here. We also have these on our site, which are really great to use when you're handling hot foods. What I do is I put one on, grab a handy dandy rubber gloves and go right over it. And this way you can work on hot foods without burning your hands. What a novel concept, right? Just like that. So all we want to do here, everybody says, first thing everybody says, run it underwater to do it. No, all you're doing, just peel it off. See, look, look how easy this just peels away. If you run it underwater, what you're doing is you're washing away all the oils, all that charred flavor. You don't want to rub that away. You want all of that good flavor in here. And because they steamed like that, look how easily they peel. You can, see, you can still see it's still smoking actually. I'm putting them on the side here so I can show you how easy it is to clean it. But once you clean it, you could even just go right ahead and just put it right onto your pork. So just layer it right on there. Just like that. There's our red peppers looking good so far. So the last thing we're gonna do, just take some baby spinach. It's just raw spinach, not cooked or not sauteed or anything like that. And just put a layer of that right on top of the roasted red peppers. Now, my favorite time, time to roll it up. So you wanna roll it really tight. Roll it as absolutely tight as you can. So just grab it and just start rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Now if you've got a lot of stuff hanging at the end, you can just sort of just take it and just tuck it back in, make it nice and even. That's okay, nothing wrong with that. See how pretty that looks already? Oh. A lot of the stuff is gonna wanna leak out when you're cooking it. So what I like to do is when I take my prosciutto, notice we're using prosciutto, not bacon. Prosciutto is the new bacon. Put one right over the ends. It may not cover it fully, but at least it'll help it protect it from some of that stuff coming out. And the next thing we're gonna do is just wrap one. It's gonna take two pieces to cover the whole thing. So I'm gonna put one here, then we'll put another one on the other side. For our next step, we're gonna take some kitchen twine, all right, cut some lengths of it, and we're gonna tie it about every inch and a half or so. And if you do that and you do it twice like that, it tends to hold better. See, it doesn't come so loose. Makes it easier to tie the second time. I learned that from my buddy, Salty Tails. And there we have a fully trussed pork loin. Woo! Now there's already a ton of flavor built into this, but we're gonna add a little bit of garlic salt to the top. You can also put it underneath the prosciutto if you wanted to. I like to put it on top. I think it just gives it a nice little crisp, and I think that the, the uh, grilling it actually gives it a nice little more flavor. So just gonna do that with a little bit of black pepper. We could just put the pork loin directly on the grates like that, okay? But we're gonna do something a little bit different. This grilling plate that we're using has these beautiful nibs on it right here that really maintains heat, but it lets it hold some moisture too. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a layer of potatoes on here. Woo! Gonna spray it up with duck fat spray, put the potatoes and lay the roast across the potatoes. This way, when it's done cooking, we got some beautiful roasted potatoes to go with our gorgeous pork loin. Makes sense, right? We just lay the pork loin right on top. Woo, that's gonna be good. Now we have one last thing we wanna do. So we wanna monitor our temperatures. We wanna cook this to 140 degrees. So we're gonna use our Meter Plus, which in case you didn't know is also available on our website. Now what I like to do, you want it in the, about halfway through. So you're gonna measure like this and kind of hold your fingers where that is then put it into your meat and just let it go to that spot. Now you're probably asking yourself and we've covered it before, but why did you light that and put it in the bottom? Because with the blaze ball, the air is getting directly to the fire. So now we can cover it up with charcoal. We are ready to put this on. So what I'm gonna do now is add my smoking blocks on there. We're gonna be using these barrel proof bourbon barrel smoking chunks. So I'm just gonna take, I don't want strong smoke flavor. I'm just gonna take two of them, stick them right down in here. They're gonna catch really quickly. Actually I'll do three, what the heck. I'm feeling crazy today. All right, boys and girls, we got a little break here while our pork loin is cooking. Now, I think the thing is gonna look awesome. First of all, those roasted red peppers, if you have not made those yet, you need to jump right on it. It's the easiest thing in the world. Bring it to a holiday party as, a, as an appetizer or something like that. Throw some little mozzarella balls on there, delicious. Anyway, that inside there with that spinach and that garlic salt on the outside, but never mind that. 
the prosciutto. Ooh, the reason that we didn't really put much more seasoning in there, the provolone, that picante provolone is super salty already. The prosciutto, super salty already, all right? So you got plenty of flavors in there. We just added a little bit of that garlic salt in there. It's absolutely gonna be phenomenal. And not only that, it's gonna look so cool. Green and red for your holiday table. It doesn't get any better than that. All right, kids, it's time to open presents. Well, let's open the grill anyway for our holiday meal. That pork run is done. It cooked to 140 degrees. It's actually at 142. So we're just gonna take this off of here. Oh my goodness. I know I say it every week, but if we had smell-o-vision, trust me, your mouth would be watering right now. It is awesome. That prosciutto, mm, look at that crispiness. Woo-wee! Now, always remember, take your string out, okay? You don't want to serve your guests string. Trust me, they will not be happy if you do. All right, now, let's cut her open and see what we've got here. Oh, that prosciutto got nice and crispy. Look at how beautiful. Is that gorgeous or what? Now tell me that is not an absolutely beautiful, beautiful holiday meal right there. It's so nice that I can't wait any longer. I have to have a little sample piece here. A little pepper, a little spinach, a little pork. Ho, ho, holy smokes, that is delicious. That is one holiday meal you are gonna want in the center of your table. Listen, I heard there might be a little bit of a turkey shortage this year. So if you're looking for an alternative, this is it, okay? Unbelievable, the crispy prosciutto, those roasted red peppers, just smack your tongue with flavors. Absolutely amazing. So folks, listen, this is getting right at the end of the year now. I wanna thank you all so much for tuning in every week and spending the year with me here on the Fogo channel. I really appreciate it, we all really appreciate it. I hope that you've been enjoying it as much as I've been enjoying it. So with that, I want you all to have this super holiday season. Remember to just tell your loved ones how much you care about them and what they mean to you. It's real important, it's the holiday season, okay? Be cheery, be merry, be happy. And until then, remember, even if it's wintertime where you are, get out and grill, and I'll see you the next time on The Fogo Life.